All right, this works. So, good to see you all. It's a beautiful sight. <laughs> uh, I'm Mika Junnila and I'm teaching game design and production at uh, Aldo School of Arts, Design and Architecture. And uh, very happy to welcome you all also on, on my behalf. Um, there's lots of stuff happening in the, in the games industry in, in Finland at the moment. And uh, I think one of the strengths of the industry here is that we can actually share things. And I think Aldo wants to be part of this. We can share information, share our skills also in this recruitment event. Uh, but without further ado, I will, I will go into the actual stuff we teach here. Um, we have some familiar faces, of course, who are already studying at, at our school, but some of you might not know what's, what's going on in Aldo. Um, so. We have had this uh, two-year MA program in new media and a focus area inside that in game design and production now for a couple of years. And uh, so people from any background uh, with any good bachelor's degree in something relevant can apply. And uh, it's really much hands-on with minds-on, as we like to say. Uh, so, of course, to learn to make games, you really have to make them. And we do lots of projects, uh, but also as a university, we need to have that broad perspective of, of what games actually are. And you can build that theoretical and conceptual understanding while you're also working in groups, actually making games. And um, we are project-oriented, multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary and international. So these are, of course, buzzwords in Alto anyway, but it's, it's really important for us uh, that apart from doing these things, uh, we have a group of people from different backgrounds. And um, that's why I will also tell you guys, maybe some of you are doing your bachelor studies at the moment, uh, in, I don't know, computer science, animation, anything relevant. Uh, so you should consider us. Um, and uh, also, of course, we have lots of international students in our groups. Um, around 15 game courses at the moment. Uh, there's stuff like game design, game, game analysis, game project, um, lots of lots of interesting things that are specifically uh, in games, and um, quite a big part of our teachers actually come as visiting lecturers from different companies. Uh, of course, me and then Professor Perttu Hämäläinen, uh, who is the professor of computer games, and sadly couldn't be here today. Um, but we are we are taking care of the teaching at the arts side of Aldo. Uh, we have uh, some background also from the industry, but we get lots of speakers from, from other companies too all the time to keep that connection. And of course this happening also is part of being this one big family. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, of course, Apart from the actual game courses, um, we also have courses in lots of related subjects in Media Lab, such as 3D animation, interactive storytelling, interaction design, sound design for games, all kinds of stuff. So um, we want to have these T-shaped professionals coming out of the MA program, as the saying goes. So um, we hope that everyone will have one really strong competence area in making games like programming or animation or producing or game design, stuff like this. But we also give them this broader picture of that you are able, let's say if you're an animator, you could still have some basic skills also in programming and especially game design. That's something that's really crucial for you, whatever your role will be in a game company, to understand what games are, what, what actually makes them tick. Um, but I will still um, talk a bit about where our students have actually gone working. And uh, as the MA program is still quite new, um, there are no actual alumni from the game focus area. But from Media Lab, um, there's been people coming out from our school, for example, Lasse Seppanen, who was the lead of Alan Wake. And we've had people in Supercell and Digital Chocolate. Uh, 
all this, also Rovio, uh, many companies um, have our alumni working there, or actually some are still students. <laughs> if you come to study first, graduate, then work. Just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would like to advertise our minor subject studies also. Uh, you have a chance to come and study with us, even if you're not applying for the actual MA program. So get to network, deepen your skills, and uh, get a game into your portfolio. Uh, we have a special module, especially for the media technology students. We have a close collaboration with the School of Science, uh, the Department of Media Technology. So we get lots of students from there every year. And uh, also, we will be opening up this arts minor subject for basically anyone uh, from Aldo to join our courses and teams. Um, so remember this if you are into games. Uh, also, now when we have also industry people here, I want to especially take one course uh, on the front now, uh, which is the Games Now course series, which will happen next year. And um, if some of you remember, there was something called Games and Storytelling um, some years back. That was a collaboration with former University of Art and Design and uh, Tampere University, bringing together uh, both industry people and uh, students. So in this course, uh, we are aiming for something like that again. So there's such a big thing, uh, such many different... <laughs> now I'm saying funny things. Uh, such big changes in the industry at the moment that um, we want to address those topics with both international and national interesting speakers. And uh, we will have lectures once a month and some workshops also and this will start in next autumn. And uh, this is a place again like this event where students and industry people can actually come together, meet each other uh, and have that interesting speaker or theme um, also, so we hope this is something that will bring something to all of you. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more info. We are just uh, uh, organizing the course and getting the speakers, so we will keep you informed. Uh, then, some last words for my part about game research in Alto. Jak will talk more about both research and, and studies you can do here at the uh, Otaniemi campus. Uh, but as Perttu Hämäläinen couldn't be here today, I will shortly present what he is working on. And uh, so the main, main idea is to uh, research different technologies, for example, animation tools. We all know that it's important while making games that you could prototype your games fast, so having better fast prototyping animation tools, for example, is on the agenda of the research group. And uh, also, um, some of the games have to do with, for example, sports education. So there's collaboration with Helsinki Circus School, for example. But I won't talk more about that. I will show you a video instead, just a second.
All right. So um, I won't I won't speak more now, um, and uh, I will I will give the stage next to Jaakko Lehtinen, who's a professor in computer graphics. Uh, but if you have any questions about uh, anything connected to these studies or minor subject studies or the Games Now course series or anything, just come talk to me or send me some email. Thank you. Thank you, Mikko. So hello everyone, I'm tagging along. I'm not a professor in, uh, in making games, I'm a professor in computer graphics, which is the technology that takes all, the, all of those creative things that you do when you're producing a game, like the art, the assets, the design, and all, all of those things, and actually shows you that final picture. Computer graphics is the set of technologies that shows you uh, the picture, produces that picture and rendering that, that you actually see on your screen. So I work for uh, the School of Science in the Department of Media Technology. Okay. <coughs> so my background is actually in, in computer games. I got interested in this stuff uh, while working for Remedy. I did a lot of the te uh, graphics technology behind Max Payne, uh, all the modeling, editing, lighting, scripting, these kinds of tools. Basically almost everything you see on screen in Max Payne 1 and 2 is created with, uh, with tools that I wrote back in the day. And that's how I got interested in research. I also had my hand in Alan Wake, although I started PhD studies at that time. Uh, after I finished my PhD in 2007, I went to MIT in Boston to do research for a couple of years as a postdoc, uh, after which I came back to Finland and I now work for, uh, started working for NVIDIA Research. NVIDIA is the world's largest manufacturers, uh, manufacturer of graphics processing units, which is, the, which is the chip inside our computer that actually draws that game, you know, the real-time graphics that, that, that you see in the game. And um, since this, uh, this uh, fall, I've, I've been uh, a professor in the Department of Media Technology. I split my time with, uh, with NVIDIA Research. Um, excuse me. And now, I guess most of you will have seen, you know, what modern real-time graphics looks like, but let's still take, you know, a 30-second glimpse into, into what AAA modern gameplay looks like. We'll skip ahead, skip ahead just a little... Whoops. So this is from Battlefield 4 uh, by uh, EA and DICE. The technology for this game is, uh, the engine is created in Stockholm by a team led by Johan Andersson and... Uh, and a lot of other talented people. So, by the way, in uh, in Konami's talk, Holy you will see you will see something that's uh, I'm gonna shut you in the if face. possible even prettier later on today. He's up, Pack. Where the hell so, have you been? I would say this the is pretty much close to the state of the art in, in real time rendering Russian, uh, right? today. So, why am I showing you this? Um, there, there's a lot of technology going behind drawing this picture, and computer graphics, as, I'm, uh, as I already mentioned, is the set of technologies behind it. And you can, you know, when you, well, I'm going to talk about the education that I give in graphics and give you some uh, a little glimpse uh, to the research that we also that we also do. So there are basically two classes you can take with me in graphics. Uh, one, is, one is the intro. Don't pay, don't pay too much attention to uh, the course codes. They will change next, uh, next fall anyway. Um, uh, there's the intro class and then there's an advanced class. The intro class will give you an overview of everything that goes into graphics, animation, modeling, rendering, and so forth. So that will sort of get you to an all-around uh, working knowledge of, of a lot of the things in, in graphics. And then in, an, in the advanced class, we go uh, into you know, more detail on, on some um, some deeper aspects uh, of, of it. And so the intro class will actually give you a pretty good idea of the technological uh, things that go into producing that frame that you saw in battle, you know, that Battlefield 4 frame. It's not really, this class is not about, you know, using pre-existing tools for producing graphics. It's about what is the technology, you know, how does that picture actually get generated by your engine? So if you're, if you're really hardcore, this gives you the ability to write your own engines or to extend ex existing engines in ways that they don't support yet. And, you know, that, that allows you to 
really really get into into the cutting edge if you master all of that. Uh, on the other, also you will have a pretty good understanding of, of how the GPU, which is the chip that actually draws the picture, works. And you will have coded a lot by yourself once you finish the class. You also, uh, you actually will have done, you know, code that's uh, uh, for modeling. You will have animated your own character by, you know, setting, you know, posing the character in interesting ways. Uh, and, you know, skinning the character, which is the way that, you know, all the characters in, in, in Battlefield, for instance, actually work. You will have written code that does that same thing. It would, you know, look pretty much the same if you had the same content. You will have written a cloth simulator and you will, you will have written a ray tracer and so forth. So I should mention this class is not exclusively, exclusively for real-time graphics. We, we take sort of a very broad picture. The advanced class, uh, this year the topic changes, but this year we're looking at realistic image synthesis, which means how do you draw, uh, how do you render indirect lighting, for instance. So you will, you'll be able to produce pictures like this, where you have, you know, in addition to the direct lighting and shadows that we see over there, you will have, you know, this indirect, smooth, nice lighting effects all over. Uh, here's another shot of, you know, the kinds of things you'll be able to do after you finish the advanced class. And you will also be able to do this in real time. Um, so there's a lot of coding, but it's, it's also a lot of fun. So people tend to do more than I ask. But I also, I also give you know, incentives uh, in, in forms of prizes uh, you know, to further incentivize uh, you know, doing more work. So for instance, in the intro class last fall, we had the top three students ha you know, get a very private face-to-face -face visit at Remedy to talk uh, you know, for several hours with the people who design the game and who write the technology to ask their own questions and sort of get a very private glimpse into, into what goes into the technology at Remedy. Uh, this fall, um, right now, in the Advanced class, we'll conclude with a rendering competition where you, you know, it's your code, you submit something that you think is very cool, and the top student will get uh, as, as the first prize a GeForce GTX Titan GPU, which is donated by NVIDIA, which, by the way, is the fastest GPU on the planet right now. But it's also, you don't have to please me in order to, to actually win that prize, because the guy who decides who gets it is actually the rendering uh, research lead at Weta Digital. Weta is the company that makes, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, Avatar, The Hobbit. You've seen, you know, their movies, you know, a ton of them. And when they don't know how to render something, Lucas' team is the one, you know, who who actually make it happen in those movies. And he's the guy who decides. No pressure. <laughs> anyway, so you get, you get visibility into you know, some city, pretty serious players. How much time do I have? One minute or two, two minutes. OK. Um, so I'm, I, I was supposed to talk about research. I'll skip most of this and just give one example project that we're doing in, in the research side of things. This is the work of my PhD student, Mika, uh, sorry, Mika, which is on the capture of the appearance of real world materials uh, from actual samples. As we all know, well, anyone who's written, you know, authored textures know that getting actually realistic materials is, you know, by drawing them by hand is really, really hard. And so it, gra graphics often looks, you know, plastic and, um, uh, doll-like. So what we do is we have an LCD screen, we show some carefully crafted patterns on the screen, we have a camera that's looking at the material sample behind it, then there's a lot of number crunching, and in the end we get out a result that that reproduces the appearance of real-world surfaces, I, I would say, rather well. On the left-hand side you will see you see a photograph of an actual material sample with spatially varying normals and reflectance. And on the right, you have a rendering created uh, from our model, which is just, it's just textures, normal maps, uh, gloss, gloss maps, these sorts of things. It's exactly the same kind of data that's already used in games today. And uh, the point here is that there's really kind of interesting surface detail going on and you should not be able to see a whole lot of difference between these two things. And this is automatic. This really is automatic. And I will run through the last slides. So the data that comes out of this system is really a texture map that has the color, that has the specular color, 
that has the glossiness that says how sharp the reflection is and, and the normal map. So we're actually building this system at, at Remedy right now as a, as a prototype they're interested. So we're sort of collaborating between the cutting edge of research and, and the cutting edge of, of AAA game production. I don't think you could paint these things in Photoshop by hand. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you very much. <laughs>